Timberwolves win 114-104 in Utah for the second game in a row against the Jazz, and we sweep the season series against them as well. We've now done that against Portland, Memphis, and Utah, who have terrorized us throughout Timberwolves history, so big deal there. We get a little bit of a break from the Mike Conley revenge bod tour as he does not perform as well against his former team as he has done regularly through this season. While we're talking about revenge bod and appearances, if you're wondering why I'm dressed like Pat Riley, uh, I was coaching tonight kind of in my men's league game. Those who can't play coach, I've got back problems, can't play. So I showed up to make sure we secure the championship, which we did. And, uh, yes, yeah, so that's why I look like this. I ended up missing a little bit over a half. In fact, my timing, which has been insanely, hilariously bad, and when I don't watch the Timberwolves, amazing things happen, uh, that sure was the case in this one. Anthony Edwards with a detonation of a dunk over John Collins that also takes him out of the game. He has to get uh, analyzed for concussion after that. I, I missed that play. I pulled up the game and watched the rest. Um, with his and one free throw. So I, I just missed it. And that just it continues to go on. When I don't watch, amazing things happen for the Timberwolves. Although they would still close this one out, thankfully. And I've got some good notes for the fourth quarter especially. And everything that I got to watch, essentially. Uh, I do want to talk about Jaden McDaniels, who does shoot a three at the end of the game when it was already closed out. Not sure why, but Jaden... Uh, the maturity and the mentality thing has been a little bit of an issue. Well, the main issue with Jaden in his career. But to talk about some positives that I noticed in this one, though he struggled offensively, he was doing some great things on the defensive end. He broke up multiple alley-oops just in the fourth quarter, pulls a chair on Markkanen, so forces that turnover. He was also the main defender protecting the rim at the bottom of the zone because we were missing all the bigs. All of them. No Gobert, no... No Cat. Of course, Cat's got the long-term injury. Gobert is still healing his rib, getting better day by day, but pain tolerance isn't to the point where he's able to play yet. And so those two were out at the start. Nas gives us 17 points in 17 minutes. Then he also has a head injury, so he's out the rest of the game. And so we're playing out there with no big unless we have Garza, which we had him out there for a stretch. Uh, but we really had to figure that thing out as it went. And you got to give the hat tip to Chris Finch for just finding ways to win. He has the second most wins all time for a Minnesota Timberwolves coach already. And he has the best winning percentage of all time. And let's just call it how it is. I am doofus. At the end of last year, I was kind of thinking, hey, we should maybe fire this guy. The playoff problems that happened this season were the same as the season before. And things didn't get uh, better than I wanted. And I'm so dumb. I, just, I yeah, that's, that's the main point I want to make here is I'm sorry I doubted Chris Finch. And once I kind of got out of that mindset of the frustration of last year, I was ready to see what he could do this year. He's found different ways to elevate this team throughout his time with us. We had the best offense in the NBA a couple of years ago when... It was super fun before we got Rudy, and now we've got the best defense in the NBA. And even when we lose kind of our identity of this year with our three bigs that are so dynamic, we still find ways in this game. The main one being Anthony Edwards. The difference in this game, I feel like Anthony Edwards and Colin Sexton, they've got kind of this same dog mentality competitive drive where they can take over and just bully ball and control everything but those are different players uh, it, like the, the, it's different levels to these things like they've got the same spirit i love watching colin sexton but he's not anthony edwards that's the difference in this game he is just an alpha only seven points at half but then he explodes through the rest of that game big third quarter and then clutch time buckets in the fourth, so many amazing plays to close that one out, and the dude just can will us to win, and when you have one of those absolute alphas, you can go places in the NBA, and there's, you, you need one if you want to have championship aspirations, which we of course have, and oh, he, he carried us in that one. It's not easy to go in and win in Utah, and it's not easy to win those series where you play the same team two games in a row. They got more healthy with them having Markkanen in this one and John Collins for 20 minutes before he has his injury. We get less healthy with the exiting of Nas Reed. 
Uh, the bench also stepped up a lot. I want to say that too. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, a plus 26 off the bench. And 10 threes from that unit. Shout out Jordan McLaughlin, 3 of 3 from 3 in that game. And he's also having a career year from distance, which is amazing to see. He's 43%, actually above that right now. And that is significantly higher than his career average, which I think is sitting at about 35. Uh, that was always kind of the biggest weak point of his game, although he's a smaller player. It's really the three-point shooting that needed to elevate if he was going to be a little bit more consistent. And that's happened. And Monte Morris, also a couple triples in this one. Uh, Slow-mo, also, I thought his defensive game was fantastic. Seeing him getting a lot of pokeaways, manning the zone well. And uh, he was big in a game where we didn't have bigs. All right. Happy we got that win. We've got a back to back playing against Denver in Target Center. I will actually be in attendance with $10 tickets way up there. Yeah, so I am undefeated on the season. When I am in attendance, I hope to keep that going. Playing Denver on a back to back as we travel from Utah back to Minnesota, that's going to be a tough one, especially if we're still missing size. Oh, I hope we have Rudy. I hope we have Nas. Oh, this might be tough. I'll keep you updated on the happenings of tomorrow. Peace, dude.